And it is of the press. Uh, the moment where we take a look at our national dailies and try to make sense of it as much as time will allow us to, while we always encourage you to grab copies of uh, the national dailies and understand in depth what is going on in Nigeria. We'll begin with, uh, we have a couple of papers, but this morning we're going to begin with the Nation newspaper, as already displayed. Uh, it says, Although my deputy wants to embarrass me with fake documents. That's coming from um, Akeridolu there. Um, isn't that interesting? And then we also have uh, other headlines there. Northern senior advocates of Nigeria divided over MBA splinter group. That story is also on page two uh, of the nation newspaper. And we have the picture story from the event of yesterday. Um, just before that, we have Jimo Ibrahim joins APC, declares PDP dead in Undo. All right, yet another, uh, another one joining another party, another defection, if you like. Now, from the picture story, we see how crashed helicopter pilot tried to save lives. We have the picture story there. Three crew members killed, unfortunately. Elderly landlady says, I was reading my Bible when the crash happened. Wow. Crash occurred minutes before scheduled landing at Mutala Mohammed Airport. Black box not yet found, says AIB. I thought that it was in the news that the black box was found. Well, grab a copy of, page of the nation and find out the details on page three. Ill-fated chopper flew in from Port Harcourt and was already in Lagos. This is so sad. Buhari, Tunubu, Sonwulu, and others mourned the dead, and that's from that helicopter crash yesterday. One million dollar levy, others, enough is enough. Federal government wants Ghana, at least across acts of hostility. Uh, levy is xenophobia in disguise, really. And um, Nigerian uh, traders won, I believe. That's on... That's according to Nigerian traders who are saying that the levy is uh, xenophobia in disguise. The stories are on pages 11 and 25 of the Nation newspaper. Let's take a look at Mali also there on the front page. ECOWAS gives Junta 12 months to restore democracy. I think that will be a puzzle for us to resolve uh, whether they would do that or not. Uh, we would only watch and see. Logistics delay resumption of international flights. Um, that's on page four. Ideally, that flight is, is supposed to have started today, if my date serves me, right? 29th of um, August, as said by Aviation Minister Hadi Sirika. But here you have it, logistics delay resumption of international flights, leaving us with no date yet. Just get into page four. You just might have more details. Ministers rallies uh, or your APC vows to restore fortunes. That's also in that news, in the nation newspaper. In the interest of time, we'll also quickly take a look at the Guardian newspaper. I will read out the headlines for you as well. And before already displayed, thank you to our production guys. Again, we have the story from helicopter crash. We are grateful to God, say residents. I can imagine. That's the reason, page four. Only God knows what it feels like to see a plane or an aircraft drop from the air. How traumatizing that can be. Uh, reasons to be grateful indeed. We had the conversation this morning on the show with um, Twinji, who is from the AIB, and he says they are expecting that we, they give Nigerians the reasons, the reports, preliminary reports, uh, would be out in six months. According to him, 18 months is the ideal date, but uh, it's usually the, the norm. But he's saying if all things go well, in six months we'll be able to know what caused that crash from yesterday. Um, we also have picture stories there. Uh, huddles await foreign carriers as flight resumes. Oh, September the 5th, okay. Um, same that we're not making it in August, the 29th, but yes, The Guardian has September the 5th. But the story is on page four. We encourage you to grab copies for yourself. Let's stay a bit on the COVID-19 figures. Uh, we seem to be forgetting that COVID-19 is still real, even though uh, places are opening up. The truth of the matter is that COVID-19 is still real. This morning, again on the show, we had uh, the safety expert 
uh, Ugochi, who was reminding Nigerians the need to keep washing our hands, wearing the face mask, and all the safety protocols that we've always talked about to keep maintaining them because COVID-19 is still real, uh, albeit not a death sentence. So the figures for Nigeria stands at 53,477 um, cases confirmed. We have 41,017 discharged already, recovered, and unfortunately 1,011 persons have also died as a result of COVID-19. Uh, just to say that COVID is still real, do what you have to do to remain safe. Uh, we'll still have um, the headlines read out to you, but I'll be joined by our senior editor, Kaide Ladeinde, uh, to make sense of the headlines on the national dailies. So before I hand over to Kaide, again, Nigeria will no longer tolerate harassment. That's from uh, the Guardian newspaper. Uh, harassment of its citizens in Ghana, the federal government wants. You can see that. And right on page four, we have Akpata steps in as 30th MBA president. I believe he was sworn in at some point yesterday at the MBA conference. And that will be it from the Guardian newspaper. Thank you very much for joining virtually Kaede Ladeinde, our senior editor. Okay, until we get hold of uh, Kaede, we'll continue. Yes, I can hear you, Amaka. Good morning. All right, good morning, Kaede. I can hear you. Good morning, Amaka. Thank you for being with us. I I'm not sure whether you were able to hear the headlines, but we are looking at what's going on on the Guardian newspaper. There is something on the helicopter crash. Uh, the residents saying they are grateful to God uh, for saving their lives. Again, we looked at the figures, the COVID-19 figures. Uh, there for us. And of course, we have the story on Nigerians as uh, citizens in Ghana say, uh, Nigeria will no longer tolerate harassment of its citizens. That's the federal government warning there. Uh, I wonder what to make of that. And then ECOWAS insists on transition government uh, to be led by civilians and gives a 12 months deadline. And lastly, uh, Akwata is sworn in, steps in as a 30th MBA president. Let me hand over to you now, uh, Mr. Lada Indi. What's your thoughts and which is catching okay. your attention? Okay, basically, I think um, I share the prayers and the gratitude of uh, Ikeja residents uh, because um, as much as the casualties involved were the people on board, mm. uh, it's not something to be joyful about, but you know, it could have been worse. Okay. It could have been more fatal than what we had yesterday. Mm. And I also monitor the news on Plus TV Africa, where we understand that the third person has finally passed on. Uh, it's quite sad. Okay. But uh, while we await the investigation, I think um, there's every reason for the people in the area to be grateful to God mm. that we didn't have... Uh, a worse situation than we had yesterday. Sorry. However, um, to also look at um, the issue of uh, air crashes, I think it's something that calls for concern. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a chopper like that some months ago, or let me say probably last year, and this is getting worrisome. This is something that we might need to check whether it's an issue that has to do with the the, the, the choppers, or it has to do with the captain. Uh, we will await the AIB to really give us because we need to see how we can have more like a zero cases. Mm -hmm. I know when they use the word accident, it means that it is not expected. But sometimes this can be human terror. And these are something that we really need to look critically before we uh, talk about some other issues. Yeah. Then another story that actually got my attention is the uh, ECOWAS given 12 months, mm -hmm. you know, uh, timeline and which our president has also backed. I think it's a welcome development. While the Malians were excited that um, data has been toppled, mm. but I think it is not, it is, it is way too much of a thing for the military to think of staying there for 36 months. That is a subtle way of bringing military back to governance. Correct. Military is a thing of the past. Military data is a thing of the past. And every 
had it just like every international community is saying no. Uh, that's a subtle yes, that okay, your people do not want you again, but I don't think that we should allow more than 12 months. So one year is quite on point. So I'm really, really game with ECOWAS on this. Where I disagree with ECOWAS then was that um, they were trying to define what the Malians wanted. Yeah. But it was okay. It's an international community. It's a global village. They are not on your own. Mm -hmm. can actually contribute. They can make a say that, please, 12 months, you've got to leave. What that means is that if they agree to leave in 12 months, if they conduct election and have civilian government in place, therefore means that uh, these sanctions can be removed. These sanctions can be uplifted yeah. and the people of Mali can do businesses with the neighboring countries and even the United States. That is, if they agree with the 12 months, good condition, I must say. Mm -hmm. Then for Olumi, they have to step in. Yes, uh, it's, it's very unprecedented one with a landslide. So there's so much expectation for him. So as he steps in, it is expected that he will do so much. He will have to work towards, uh, um, you know, it's a treasure group. So he, we need to work with the bar and the benches to see how judiciary can gain the pride of mm. the things because... Mm, I'm sorry, we're having... Important. A, we, we seem to... Do this... this very good and this okay i'm sorry we're having a bit of uh, issues with your uh, network there but we'll go to the next paper until we reconnect clearly with uh, mr Lade in the on the other end we take the saturday sun and um have a couple of papers a couple of matters there really um, how three crew members died as helicopter crashes into lagos home that's still on the helicopter crash in security, Amotekun commanders draw red line for Mieti Allah vigilantes. That's on page 23 and 25. Stay away from southeast, Ohaneze uh, says. IPOB and INC warns as government reacts. My Kujay prison story, that's uh, from Rusewe, uh, NCAC DG, is on page 5. We no longer tolerate harassment of Nigerians in Ghana. The federal government warns and leads offenses by Ghanaian authorities against Nigeria. And it says Buhari backs ECOWAS 12 months transition plan for Mali. Still on politics, we have no zoning, no polls in 2023. Folks are already ahead. Uh, but they judge warns APC and PDP leaders. Only the two parties will determine if power would shift, that's according to Sheikh Hussani, and make Igbo president see Nigeria progress, or Hanegze says, and court reinstates four suspended Ondo on, on lawmakers awards 20 million era damages. That story is also on page 10, I believe, of the Sun newspaper. Um, I'm not sure whether we have, whether or not Kade is still on the line. Okay, Kade, Mr. Lada Inde, I hear you still yeah. on the line. Uh, okay. We apologize for the quality earlier. We couldn't hear clearly. So I, I've been able to read out the headlines for the Sun newspaper. But I, let me just pick yeah. your thoughts, um, Mr. Lada Inde. This whole thing about Ghana, um, in the Guardian newspaper, it says, you know, um, Nigerians in Ghana are saying that the levy of 100, um, it's 100 million, I believe, or $1 million, that that's uh, xenophobia in disguise. And here we see the federal government is saying it will no longer tolerate the harassment of Nigerians in Ghana and list Niger uh, Ghanaians' offenses, if you want, against Nigerians. W what do you think? How, what do you make of all of this conversation between Nigeria and Ghana every now and then how do we resolve this yeah i i, I listened to um our senior brother that's a little moment a while ago and while he was making some kind of stop to comparison i think uh, uh, deeply this animosity has been there over time what we don't know is uh, when it's going to end mm -hmm. what we don't know is um when are we going to actually see each other as members? Uh, we don't want to 
bore you with the issue of Ghana must go and what led to that. But what is important is we must learn to put the past behind us. We must learn to tolerate one another. We must learn to see that it's only one race, and that is the human race, irrespective of color. And it's so Mr. Nana, I'm, uh, I'm very sorry. I can see that you're passionately talking, but the, the quality, the audio, it, um, we can't clearly hear you. So I, I apologize profusely for that. We will take the next paper, which is the Punch newspaper. And I'm going to, uh, again, continue with the headlines there for you. It would be displayed, uh, already displayed. Thank you so very much to our production uh, crew there. Now, we have again Akpata uh, and Sands kick as Northern lawyers form parallel MBA. Now, this conversation is springing forth from uh, the whole issue of them taking back their invitation to the governor of Kaduna State, Madam El Rufai. You recall that um, MBA said they didn't want him to come and speak following the accusation of him not being able to handle, if you like, the crisis in southern Kaduna. And so they said, no, you won't be speaking to us. After that happened, some northern lawyers also said, well, named a couple of others that should not come to speak at that event. And some of them boycotted, as it were, uh, that conference. And this is where they are. And like Kaede was saying, Mr. Lada Inde was saying earlier, uh, Ulumide Akpata, indeed, as the 30th president, has got some work to do. He's got to find a way to, first of all, bring some unity in that, um, in that space before they can move forward, if you ask me. So here again, uh, Ulumide and senior advocates of Nigeria kick as northern lawyers uh, form a splinter group. We also have on the Punch newspaper, helicopter was two minutes from Lagos airport before crashing. I think, oh, this is so sad. This detail, this additional detail just makes it even more sad to see that it flew from Port Harcourt and just two minutes to land and this unfortunate incident happened. And that's according to the air traffic controllers. While we give thanks really, as uh, Mr. Ladeindi was saying, that it could have been worse, we also condole with the families of those, the three persons who have died uh, from that. Uh, rotor blades stopped mid-air before accident, according to eyewitness and the pilots, how pilots maneuvered to avoid crashing into school. That's according to a businessman. We salute him indeed. And Buhari Tunubu Obaseki mourn as three crew members die from that unfortunate incident yesterday. Why I cursed those who criticized me for divorcing my wife. That's according to Luo. You just might be interested in that. The story is on page 31. Um, COVID-19, Lagos may lose 250 billion naira, uh, says Governor Sonwolu. That story is on page 11. 240 billion naira. That's a lot of money. You may want to know what that's about. Now, $1 million levy, the federal government, uh, federal government tackles Ghana for incessant harassment of Nigerians and condemns long jail terms for over 200 Nigerians. That story is on page 9. So we're not just dealing with the issue of uh, the levy. We're also dealing with uh, over 200 Nigerians who are in prison, in jail in Ghana. We have some conversation really to have, I believe, between the Nigerian government and Ghana to find a way to resolve all that is going on. We have a lot of Ghanaians in Nigeria, and of course, lots of Nigerians in Ghana. We must come to a place to resolve this. We are able to now connect with uh, Mr. Lada Hinde on phone. Hopefully, it's better. Thank you, Mr. Lada Hinde, for your patience. We apologize for uh, the, the network issues. I'm now on the, Sun, on the Punch newspaper and quickly taking the headlines so we'll be able to wrap up with uh, of the press segment and if you can hear me um, very well okay thank you for being there uh, we also have the trying I'm trying to wrap up on the headlines from the punch newspaper uh, why I cursed those I've read that and then COVID-19 240 billion naira. we just might be losing that according to the governor 
uh, of Lagos State. I, I think those are the key issues there from the Punch newspaper. Um, something on entertainment though, Tiwa Savage, Yemi Alade's fans clash over superiority. All right, that's on page three. You might want to uh, get that. Blasphemy musician denied access to lawyers as appeal deadline nears. That's on Kano State. The story is on page 16. Adopo, voters must use face masks, sanitizers, and others, according to INEC. Um, okay, let, uh, Mr. Ladende, let me hand over to you. But before then, there was a bit of information that filtered out yesterday on this whole issue about the blasphemy uh, uh, story, the guy from the north. You recall that you know that in, in, I mean, in Nigeria, we, when they talk about death sentence, unless a sitting governor signs it, it just retains us. If you like, the person is sentenced to prison for life, it may never get uh, the death sentence either by hanging or whatever, unless a sitting governor approves of it. But yesterday, the governor of Kano State, uh, Malam Ganduje, says he would not hesitate to sign uh, that piece of law, uh, if you like, if it comes to that point that he will sign it, he won't hesitate to sign. And if he signs, what it means is that the young man will be literally and practically sentenced to death. So that brings us again into a whole conversation around capital punishment. I don't know what your thoughts are. I've read out the headlines. Though, okay, mm. I will say, uh, please do intervene. <laughs> okay. Uh, ever since the conversation started, the argument had always been that it's a sensitive issue. Mm. Quite sensitive because it is religious and it was so pronounced on the social media. Having said that, I think what Gandhi J has done or what he plans to do is the fact that he's trying to weigh in his veto to get the capital punishment carried out mm. because there's a lot of controversy surrounding it. We've seen some Islamic leaders saying that um, let us not politicize this issue. This is what Sharia law says. And this man has pleaded guilty. Why are we dilly dallying over it? You know, blasphemy is a very sensitive issue. It's just unfortunate that uh, the man is here to file, file an appeal in a conventional court so we can't cry more than the bereaved. So if the man chooses to go by what he stands by, because Sharia law in the north is a thing of choice. Mm. You can decide to go to the conventional court or you go through the Sharia court. So if you, if you subscribe to Sharia court, you subscribe to the laws, you choose to be punished by the law, then I think our advocacy uh, needs to be checked again. Mm. So why we do not want this kind of punishment to come on the man, the man seems to be totally sold out mm. to, to, the, to, to the Sharia dictates. So, uh, but I think the governor shouldn't speak with so much vigor to get this capital punishment carried out because there are quite a lot of issues in the conventional court that requires that the governor gives his assent to get the person executed that has not been attended to. Why is he in a hurry? Why is he so much in a hurry to jump into this? So as a governor, you must see beyond your religious enclave. You must remember that you are not just a governor to the Muslims, but you are governor to everyone in that state. That's how we're going to uh, wrap it uh, in the interest of time. Thank you so very much for staying uh, with us. Also, Kay Lada, the senior editor here on Plus TV Africa. Thank you so much. All right, and that's a wrap on Of The Press.